Earlier this week, the physicist Michio Kaku made an appearance on Joe Rogan's podcast, where he discussed, among other things, AI and quantum computing. And let me just say that their discussion made it pretty clear that Michio Kaku doesn't know anything about modern AI. In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the things that Michio Kaku got wrong. And if you're new here, I'm an AI research scientist currently in industry, formerly at Berkeley AI Research, one of the world's leading academic labs, where I worked on computer vision, robotics, and reinforcement learning. This video is going to have three parts. The first will be about what Michio Kaku got wrong about how large language models, or LLMs, like ChatGPT, work. The second will be why that matters, and the third will be what he gets wrong about quantum computing as it relates to AI. Before I get into it, I just want to remind everyone to please subscribe if you haven't already to support this work and keep getting pieces like this. Let me say here that Kaku is undoubtedly a very smart guy and an expert physicist but he's not an expert in AI. And those two things are not mutually exclusive. Expertise is not universal. I would take John Danaher's advice on how to hit a blast double, but not on what to wear to a wedding. Well, first of all, AI is a software program. We're talking about uh, homogenizing different kinds of essays on the web, splicing them together, and then passing it off as your latest creation. Basically, plagiarism using digital computers. I think most people understand that this is not how LLMs work, so if you already understand how LLMs work, you can skip this part. These models don't just store their training data in a database somewhere, then retrieve relevant segments upon request and splice them together like a video editor making jump cuts. Instead, they internalize language understanding through exposure to internet scale data sets. The way I would explain this is that there are three phases to training a model like this. In the first phase, they're trained to predict the next piece of language called a token, which can be either a word or a subword like ly or ph from the preceding sequence of tokens. So given a sentence like I love dogs, the LLM's first task is to predict love from I and then dogs from I love. And this is a really simple task, but repeated over billions of sentences with the diversity of the internet, a large enough LLM that performs this task well can build an understanding of how language works. Then once the model performs well on this token prediction task, we move into the second phase, where it's trained on datasets specifically of questions and answers. So given the question, who was president in 2016, the model's task is to predict Barack Obama. After this second phase, the LLM is not just a general student of language, it's specifically a question answerer. And then finally, in the third phase, the model is trained via human feedback to produce answers that are viewed by humans as high quality, relevant, and appropriate. So what do we get from that? LLMs are not just splicing together sentences from their training data like Michio Kaku suggests. And this is more than a semantic distinction, because Michio Kaku's description of LLMs leads him to say this. Now also, as you know, chatbots will also lie, cheat, swindle, joke, and do all sorts of crazy things. Yes. If you're a high school kid, you could write all sorts of science fiction scenarios, and some chatbot may grab pieces of that nonsense and incorporate it into their essay. Now, if LLMs worked the way he thinks they do, this might be true. But given how LLMs actually work, this is super unlikely. And it's super unlikely for the following reason. Let's say the student in question writes a story that begins with this. In the week before their departure to Arrakis, when all the final scurrying about had reached a nearly unbearable frenzy, an old crone came to visit the mother of the boy, Paul. Now the model will see this in its training dataset, along with every book ever written, every newspaper article ever printed, every blog post on Substack, and every comment on Reddit. The student's story is going to get diluted by all the other text in the dataset. Even when prompted specifically with those first few words, in the week before their departure, the LLM's task is still to predict the most likely next token. And in training, that LLM has seen every blog post talking about departing to Paris, every YouTube vlog talking about a flight whose departure is delayed, and every New York Times story about some lawmaker's departure from the norm. In other words, there are many probable continuations to this sentence in the week before their departure. And our hypothetical student's science fiction story is just exactly one such continuation in a massive ocean of probability. And because of that, it becomes really, really improbable for the LLM to repeat that story word for word. 
Now, credit where credit is due, the people in the comments were so quick to call out Michio Kaku on his misunderstanding of how LLMs work. But not that many people commented on his pretty strange claim that quantum computing could resolve a pretty stubborn failure mode for AI. There is no fact checker for chatbots. Let me repeat that again. Mm. There is no fact checker for chatbots. That is the whole ball of wax. That's the reason why they're so dangerous. Now it's true that LLMs can confidently produce factually incorrect statements. That's a well-known problem in AI. It's called hallucination. It's well known, it's well studied, and there are several different schools of thought in AI about how to resolve this. Most of them involving different kinds of techniques called grounding. Now, without going into the weeds on this, there is no single accepted solution as of right now. But the consensus from people working on this is that the problem comes from software, and it's going to be solved in software. Not only is this consensus in the AI research community, but it also is common sense for a reason that I'll explain in a moment. Which makes it kind of weird that Michio Kaku states out of the blue, without any justification, that... That's the problem. Now, here's where quantum computers come in. Come in. Quantum computers can act as a fact checker. You can ask a quantum computer to remove all the garbage, remove all the nonsense in these articles, and it'll do that. So, in other words, the hardware may be a check on some of the wild statements made by software. Now, this just doesn't make sense. Why? Because the power of quantum computers is that they exponentially increase computational power. But hallucination isn't a problem because our computers aren't fast enough to solve it. In other words, fact-checking systems are not bottlenecked by hardware. The problem is not that we need faster computers. Hallucination is unsolved because the perfect fact-checking software doesn't exist. We don't know how to build it. We don't clearly understand what logics and structures should underlie this thing of fact-checking. So it's pretty unclear why Michio Kaku thinks that a hardware innovation will solve what is fundamentally a software problem. Even if you could buy a quantum computer at your local Best Buy and set it up and play with it, you would still have to invent entirely new algorithms to remove all the nonsense from AI-generated texts or training data, like Michio Kaku suggests. And we just don't know how to do that. And if we did invent those new algorithms, they would work just as well on traditional computers as on quantum computers. Okay, so again, Michio Kaku is a super smart guy. He's an expert in physics, no one's denying that, but he's just not an expert in AI. This was a bit of a weird interview, and you know, maybe because it's the hottest topic in science right now, and he's a science communicator, he felt some pressure to have an opinion on this. I don't really know. But all in all, he did say a couple strange things on the podcast, but despite that, I'm still going to give him the benefit of the doubt moving forward. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more stuff like this, please remember to subscribe to the channel. And you can also check me out on Substack, where I'm writing about similar topics like internet culture, AI, and tech. So please subscribe to me over there as well to support my work and get more pieces like this.